I've been in Canada now for about six years. I arrived in Canada in May of 2017. And by May of 2023, that's exactly six years since I've been in Canada. And there is a lot of lessons that I've learned in those six years. Some of them are, you know, hard lessons, lessons that I learned the hard way. There were a lot of mistakes I made, you know, there were some things I wish I understood earlier, but unfortunately, you know, things just are the way they are. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the hard lessons, the tough times, you know, all of the ups and down and everything. If you're planning to come to Canada, this video will be useful to you to learn, you know, about some real time experiences. And even though you're new in Canada, it's also going to be a beneficial to you. If you've been in Canada for a while, you can also watch this video and see whatever thing I'm going to be sharing in this video. The first lesson that I that I learned in a very hard, no, well, I'll say hard way and also good way is that you have to learn how to do things yourself. You know, you may have been coming from a place where your admission was done for you, your study permit application was done for you, maybe your PR application was done for you, your visit visa, whatever it is, was all done for you. But now that you're here, you have to learn how to do things yourself because there are a lot of things that you're going to be applying for. For example, even though someone have applied for study permit for you, you may be in Canada now and your study permit is about to expire. You have to apply for extension. Imagine, imagine you as a student going to look for an agent to apply for study permit extension for you. It's not just going to make a lot of sense. So if you can get to apply for your study permit yourself, it is going to be an advantage because when you apply for extension, if need be, not everyone applies for extension. If you have um, a longer study permit, especially if your passport expiring is long and they give you usually they give you you know more than um let's like three to four months beyond the duration the, the, the start the the end date of your program right but if your passport is expiring then you know you have to definitely extend there are a lot of things you have to apply for yourself for example you have to apply for social insurance number then you have to do that by yourself you have to maybe apply for driver's license or maybe your international passport is expiring you have to apply for that yourself these are things you should do you say now you know they are gonna they can do it for you here but people are going to charge you a lot of money as much as you know one thousand dollars to do any kind of application for you so that is a lot of money right so but if you have the money and you want to give someone to do it for you that's up to you for example for myself i have to extend my study permit i have to apply for my driver's license do my social insurance number when i when i was about finishing my masters i have to apply for my phd admission there were a lot of scholarships that i had to apply for i had to apply for my works my wife's open work permit which was approved imagine if i had to give all of these things to be able to do and another thing is you're going to be filing your taxes you know so and i would say for the first tax you can give someone to file for you but as time progresses, like the very first tax that i filed I, had, I got help from my university, but after that, every other tax that I filed, you know, I actually did it myself. If you want to do this tax outside, they can charge you a little, uh, you know, like 100 to $300 just to file your taxes. So these are some of the things you can save money on. So it was a lesson that I had to learn that, well, I have to learn how to do a lot of things. Uh, okay, let me also give you another example, you know. Um, I had to fix my car some time ago. The light bulb, you know, had an issue. So I was like, okay, let me call Canadian Tire to help me to get it fixed. And it said it's $107. I was like, oh, okay, that's quite as expensive. So I was like, can't I even check how to get this thing done? So I browsed it online. I actually saw that I can buy this thing for $7. I bought this thing for $7 and it did not take me five minutes to get it fixed. You know, so anything you can do yourself, is going to save you a lot of money. So that's one of the lessons that I learned. The number two lesson that I learned is that read every contract before signing. Because everything here is all about contract, one year contract, six months contract, you know, two years contract. If you have a phone bill, let's say you're working with, you are with any of these, you know, phone providers, you know, you do a two years contract, electricity bill, you know, maybe month to month, two years contract as the case may be. 
on your house rent, your lease can also be like a month, month not the month, usually one year, right? And then your internet bill, my internet bill, for example, now it's uh, um, like a two year contract. So I can't just say I'm leaving. Okay. So one of the thing you, I, you have to really do is if they give you any contract, you have to read it like have, don't just sign and say, oh, you know, glance through and then where's the signature you just sign because especially when you want to quit that thing, when you want to end that contract, then you have to, they are going to bring up all of those things that are in that contract. For example, I was having my uh, television, you know, there was like, um, uh, there was all of the, the internet was there. There was also the television station. I discovered that I wasn't really watching like local television station. And I was like, oh, I called them all and I'll call it. They said, well, if you're canceling this, then you have to pay <laughs> whatever is left for your contract. I was like, what? You know? And so they said, okay, uh, if you, if, if you're ending a certain, set a time, they can give you, a, a, they can give me a discount. You know, they give me like maybe like a 20 or 30% off. You know from paying the other banner because when i did the calculation and how much i had to pay you know if i remember that person i saw that if i pay the rest off it's actually going to be much cheaper for me so another thing is i was i was planning to get a new apartment and uh i know my my lease have you know i've stayed in place for one year and i wanted to get like another um place and i I called one of them and I said, oh, can I get a new apartment like with the same company and just move even though this second lease that I've signed up for the second year has a completed? They said yes. And then maybe after a few days, I called another person in the same company and they said, no, 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 no. If you're leaving, you have to pay two months. Okay, if you, if you want to break your contract now, you have to pay two months of the rent okay if let's say for example i'm living on let's say it's a uh, august 1st if i'm living august 1st and they are still like my my lease is like the december i'm going to pay two months of the house rent when i leave i was like oh i i when i went back to read the clause of uh, all the everything written in the, in the um in the words called everything when I checked everything written in the agreement, I actually discovered that it is there. I just did not read it, okay? So if I had read it, I wouldn't have argued with them. I would have known how to kind of, you know, adjust and move things around. So that is another thing. And then you have to also learn here that rent is due on the first day of the month. So there is nothing like, oh, I'm going to pay you later. Just give me some time. Once it's past the first day, they're going to charge you Fifty dollars depends on the place. My for my place is fifty dollars. If you miss fifty dollars, you know, so you can kind of see that it is it is a little part of your lease. Okay, so you have to read all of the agreement and make sure you know everything before signing. Okay, if you don't understand, ask question before signing. The third thing that it's very 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 important because. A lot of people just focus on want to get admission and all that, and then when you get the admission, you're here and you're feel like where well, I don't really need any other thing, any other education. The thing you want to understand is you have to learn about the Canadian financial system. Very important. If you don't know the system and the system can outsmart you. Okay. So you have to be very smart, especially learning how to use your credit card. With your credit card, you can buy you, you when I first came, I felt like, oh wow, I have a thousand dollars on my credit card. I'm just gonna start using the money however I want. And on the flip side, I have to actually think, oh, this is actually my money. This is not my money, they're just giving it to me. I have to pay back, right? So you have to always have that mindset. Okay. When you go to use your credit card, let's say you have a thousand dollar credit card of one thousand five hundred dollars credit card, don't just use start spending money you don't have or the money you are not expecting for that month let's say for example you have um you are buying something of 500 dollars on your credit card and you know that that month you're not even expecting anything you're just going to pay like a minimum payment you know people do minimum payment minimum payment means if you're owing like a 500 dollars on your credit card if you don't have that money to clear at the end of the month or at your whatever you know statement you did you can pay like maybe 10 or 20 dollars depends on what they fix and then they can push that amount they're not going to charge you interest if you pay that minimum payment right 
So start using your credit card and then clear the credit card because this credit card is going to be very helpful when you want to go and buy a house, when you want to go and rent, you know, they want, they want to, credit score basically means is this person able to get debt and clear that debt off? That is what the credit score tells them. Okay. And if you, if you're renting, if you're buying a your house and you have a very high credit score, you're going to get low interest rate. But if your credit score is all screwed, it means that when you have something to buy, then, then uh, they, they feel that you are not going to be, you are not credit worthy. You know, you might not be able to pay it back on time. They're not going to charge you higher interest. Another thing you want to be very cautious of is anything sales. If you go to the mall, they are always telling you sales, sales, 50% off, 30%. Off. The truth of the matter is that most of the things are always on sales, right? If you don't need it, just leave it. You know, not because, oh, if you want to buy everything, if you want to buy a lot of things because they are sales, 30% off, 50% off, you're going to keep spending and spending and spending, right? So. If you don't need it a lot of the, a lot of times that's why whenever i want to buy something i you know have a budget and a list right so if i don't need it even though it's like 100 percent of if i don't need it i don't buy it although there are sometimes you know you weigh the thing right there are sometimes you don't need at the moment but they are something good and you really know you know the original price of that thing and you sit on the sale right and you know that maybe you're going to need the thing in the next week or so you can buy something like that but you know apart from that then you know there is no need you have to be aware of that another thing is that another thing is that before doing or buying anything if you want to compare prices with different vendors that would be really good if you want to buy something what i do now if i want to buy something you know i first check walmart i check amazon i check best buy i you know no freeze i just want to make sure i get the best deal right you know so i mean for people that have too much money maybe they might not care but for someone like me that i'm very conservative of my spending you know i have a very high culture of savings right and, and, and as and as such i really monitor my spendings right so i check all of the available options and most of the times i always make sure i get the best deal when i wanted to buy my car you know i checked facebook market kgg you know deal and all around so the kind of car i wanted to buy i kind of have an idea where i could get the lowest possible price with a very good deal sometimes lowest price doesn't necessarily mean the best so you want to get the best quality at the lowest price possible so that you can save some money so that would be helpful the fourth thing that I want to advise is participating in a lot of community and volunteering activities. This might sound like, oh, why, why do I even need community activities? You're going to need this because it's going to help you, especially for newcomers, okay? If you can do a lot of volunteering, it's going to really help you integrate into the Canadian system, okay? If you don't participate, you know, it might take some time to get outside of your academics. You know, this is a very fantastic way to learn a lot of things. I know a lot of things that I've volunteered in lots of places. I can't even count. I've volunteered during the Canada Day, uh, during different kinds of fairs, fair, book sale, you know, um, uh, new fund athletics association name it okay this was really helpful i made a lot of friends and actually the person i used for my reference for my phd is actually someone i volunteered with so it is really good okay it's really good you know really learn how to do something with volunteering to really help you give you that experience and that good integration into the culture at least you can learn a lot of things outside of your academics the fifth thing that i want to talk about today it's a very peculiar one be careful of the people you call friends especially those that seems like oh these people are this particular person is from my region you know you have to be very careful Right, oh, this person is from my region, it means that this person is going to be friendly. Not always true. You have to be very careful. You have to watch that person for a long time before, you know, choosing friends and all that. And you might think that people have your best interest. Not everybody actually care about you, right? They might be talking to you, you might even see them as friends. The way you know that you have friends is when you have maybe financial challenges or you need something and you reach out to them, they will just say, oh man, you know what? I'm still struggling myself, you know, so be very careful, be very careful. I mean, I have a lot of friends from my side that are really good friends, you know, but there are still some of them that I know even though that from me, I said they can never be my friends because I don't want them to carry me to where I don't know, right? So be very careful. Another thing 
People that have been in Canada longer than you, be very careful. Do not envy them. You see someone that has been in Canada for five years and they are riding a 2023 $40,000 car. They've been in Canada for uh, four, five years and you're just coming and you think that, oh, this person is riding this big car, you know, he's in this big house, you know. So I want to work five, six jobs to be able to match up with this person such that I will have more money to match that person. Never do that. Never do that. There are people that have been here and you might even be still be a student, right? And they are, they are done school, they are working. So don't overstress yourself because of what you see. Other people have seen that a lot. I've seen it's very common that new students are buying $20,000 car because their friends that are in Canada for a while, they also have in the same amount of car. And after buying the car, they are in problem, right? They are, they are trying to, you know, they are paying like three to $400 in insurance every month. And... They are still struggling to get to their tuition and all of this. So never imitate anyone, no matter how long they've been in Canada. Another thing is that you have to be aware of roommate or housemate. Okay, I mean, not every one of them is friendly. Oh, that you are in the same room. Do you know that you can be in the same, especially for shared apartment, you can be in a shared apartment. You can't just go and use somebody's plate or or, or, or knife without asking for their permission. In fact. There was a time I used to stay with people, you know, in the shared apartment. I was using someone's jug, okay, electric kettle. And uh, the person said I shouldn't use it. I was like, oh, this is quite surprising because it was just on the table because shared apartment, the kitchen is usually shared. I felt like, oh, it's just like water jug. I can use it. And the person said, no, so I have to go buy my own, right? So never use people's things, even though it's on, their, on the common space without their permission you can always ask okay you can always ask very important and don't poke nose into what other people are doing in their rooms okay if they are doing something you feel is um is harmful or is a, is putting you at risk as a tenant in that house then you can let your landlord know okay but if it's something that doesn't concern you it doesn't affect the house and it's just them just let them be learn to give people their space the people just love to be themselves here learn to give them their space unsolicited help they don't like it if they want help they will request for it but don't just offer yourself and say oh i want to help you they they, they, they wouldn't want to allow it okay so make sure you only help when it is required when it when it is requested for i've had a couple of roommates you know you might have a roommate that is not that is not very neat right and sometimes it can be very difficult so what i did that time when i had some roommate that weren't very neat i just did my part right i make sure that i cleaned my room i make sure the bathroom because i'm the one going to be using the bathroom i don't care whether you are using it or not i still have to clean it because this is some something that is going to be you know it's going to, it's going to affect my health right so i try as much as possible to clean it and then at some point i, I, I tried talking to the land okay it's good to get a schedule okay so that we can know who, who and who is going to be cleaning at every point in time the sixth thing I want to talk about today is that a good smile is not an invitation to friendship, okay? So do not, especially for the white folks, okay? Do not assume that, oh, because they are smiling at you, you know, that, <laughs> that actually means that they are very friendly. It's just their way of expressing, you know, um, okay, it's just normal to them. It doesn't mean anything. So don't think that <laughs> there was a guy you know, he saw one white lady that was just smiling to, to, to him and then he felt like, oh, let me talk, go talk to this lady. And it was such an embarrassing thing for the guy. So just be very careful with it, okay? Very, especially things like sexual assault. You know, if you looked at someone too long in a very unusual way, it's a problem, right? And especially when you're into teaching, right? You are doing TA and all that. Be very careful. When you're doing TA with students, don't, do, don't be too close to them. Right. Apart from, I don't. For me, when I'm doing, I don't even care to know your name. Right. I just do my stuff and get out. Okay. I don't have any other business with anybody. Once I meet you outside of school, I don't know you. You don't know me. That's about it. Okay. Because I don't want someone to start be thinking, oh, because I know this person. That's why this person is always having a, good, a better grade. You know, that's not true. So do your own thing. Let people be right if you're that smiling to you <laughs> or to the <laughs> to them you know or just tell them 
that's right you know that's about it and then go your way okay but there are some of them that are really friendly don't get me wrong there are some that smile they genuinely meet it they can say hi good morning you know and they're good but don't just be careful okay be careful about it seventh thing i want to talk about today is ask 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 and ask if you don't know anything just ask a question ask a question okay if you're trying to get a contract you don't understand ask a question if you want to sign up for anything ask questions okay there was a time i entered the bus the first time in newfoundland and i wasn't really sure how i was going to come now i didn't even ask okay? i just entered the bus and then i totally passed the place i was supposed to stop i didn't know that i have to push the bell to say oh uh, someone is alighting it and then stop and the bus passed my bus stop and then i just gently went to the man i said ah, i was supposed to stop the man oh next time just press the button i was like okay you know so you have to ask 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 and ask ask questions it's very important and they are always willing to give you answers okay ask a lot of questions about everything and you know ask people how they did something if you want to buy us ask people how they what are some of the processes involved ask questions okay number eight build professional references i cannot overemphasize this these guys here they are so crazy about references if you're trying to get a job that the first thing is can i get three people that can attest show your ability you know and to say oh this guy is doing very well and has a good character and all that so wherever you are try to know people be people that can talk good of you do you know that having a good reference can make you get or lose a job okay so if you know people you know your church in your in your school you know have good relationship with people such that when help is needed these people can then attest and say okay i know this person this person was a good person why we work together so, so yeah. and you know that this can even be someone you volunteered with or maybe a lady or a man that you volunteered with now you're trying to get a job you can use their name as a reference but let them know in advance okay you can use their name as a, as, as a referee and they can call them and they can attest to you that yes this person actually you know uh, we work together and this person is really nice so very important to build professional network then the 19 uh okay uh, before i talk about the 19 um uh, never let your study permit expire if you are an international student you have to apply 30 days before it expires so make sure you always pen that date down and write it somewhere because once you lose your status, it's a different application than study permit extension. You're not going to be applying to restore your status, and it's not compulsory that it must be granted. So it's easier to get study permit extended than you know try to apply for status and and, and all that. The ninth thing I want to talk about today is that if you're an international student, you have to always make sure you know which of the permanent residency route. You are going to be taking as an international student whether the canada experience class federal skilled worker provincial nomination you have to begin to plan ahead okay i know the most common one is the canadian experience class then there is also if you finish canadian degree you can apply for the federal skilled worker right and if that is if you have um one especially for those that are doing diploma and masters or PhD that already have like a, a bachelor's degree from their home country and I work for one or two years minimum you know and they can apply for the federal skilled worker and then for other people can that want to do the provincial nomination also think about it begin I, I don't know why people wait after they graduated they're kind of thinking oh what uh, how am I going to do this Canadian experience that what does it even mean what are the documents required and all of those things to apply so it's best to begin to learn everything as things unfold is really going to help you okay so there are a lot of other lessons that i've learned along the way you know though these are just few of them that is going to re these, are, these are some of the things that have helped me okay another thing that i've forgotten uh, that i forgot to mention is that you have to believe in yourself okay believe in yourself believe in your ability do not allow anyone to talk down on you work at your own pace and then you know see how things go right work at your own pace do not let anybody talk down on you be focused and don't choose a career because your friends are choosing a career choose a career that matches best what you want to do in the future and then you should be just good i hope this is some of the few things that i've learned over the past six years are going to be helpful to you 
if you really like this video so please consider hitting that like button and subscribe if you haven't it's going to help you know youtube are going to recommend this video to other people so that's going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video cheers